Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. I was asked a question during one of my live streams about when you use a property management software like Hemline, the one that I'm using, and the rent is paid, where does the money go and how do you get it? And I thought the best thing to do, not just share my experience, but I have Dana, the CEO of Hemline here, to explain all of the different options and what actually happens to the money when a tenant pays it and how long it takes for you to get it. Great. I love this question. And here is why. Hemlane has this gets the same question from our customers that every property management software platform out there gets. And here's why. Um, all of the property management softwares and platforms like Hemlane that collect rent have their customers' best interests in mind. And what I mean by that is we want to get the money to you as quickly as possible with the most difficulty to dispute it. In other words, we don't want disputes to happen and for the money to get retracted. And we want the highest level of confidence of when we can send that money to you. It has been happening, actually, I would say more often than it used to, where folks will ask, so users will come to us and say, do you make interest off of it? Because it takes three to five business days to get to me, you know, five business days if I'm a new customer, so your first transactions, and three business days thereafter, Hemlane must make money off of that flow, right? Like we must be floating the funds and make interest. And my response internally, which I would never share to a customer in a customer response is, ha ha ha, I wish we made money off of it. We actually lose money because every single payment transaction we pay for, like we have to pay that payment processing fee. So no property management platform out there, Hemlane or any other one that you use makes money off of your rent collection. I can assure you that. But he, the most important part is the why. So to back up and kind of talk about payment processing, the safest way to send money, because wire transfers are expensive. Like if you were to do a wire transfer, you know, even your bank charges $25 to $30, it has to be through the bank. We can't do that, right? So the safest way to do it is called ACH. ACH is the automatic clearing house, and it takes money from one bank account and sends it to another bank account. And the beauty of ACH is it works with every bank. So like, for example, Zelle doesn't work with every bank, um, but ACH does. And so it, the beauty of that is like, it doesn't matter what credit union that no one has ever heard of that your tenant uses, ACH still works. The other thing that people love about ACH transactions and why it's the best way to transfer rent is that is nearly impossible to dispute. Now you can dispute it, but it's nearly impossible. It has to go up the bank branch to basically like the president level to get some sort of approval from them and the other bank to retract those funds. It has happened, so it's not impossible to have, but there's always another side of the story. It's not a tenant just saying, hey, I want to you know, take the money back because a repair I didn't think was done in a timely manner or something like that. So because disputes are so difficult, ACH is still the safest way to do um, uh, transfers. It's also called a bank-to-bank -bank transfer. Now, what does that process look like and why does it take so long? Um, I highly recommend, because we're not going to have time in this whole video, and they're going to do a much better and more eloquent job of explaining it. There's something called the plumbing of the U.S. banking system. It's an NPR. It's an NPR that you just listen to. And they talk about what they call the plumbing, like, you know, of the, the banking system of like, why is it so antiquated? Why does ACH take so long? And there are a couple of key points in that NPR. One of the key points that they bring up with it is that ACH, it's just like wire transfers. You know, wire transfers are like cut off on a certain date. It's the same thing with ACH. Like it's weekends. It doesn't work. It will not deposit funds into your bank account on weekends. And you're like, why not? We all work you know, 24 seven staff people, seven days of the week at Hemlane. You would think that the banking system cannot, but even their systems are not set up to run on weekends. There's like this, all everything about it has not been done well. And that is where blockchain was 
and I'm not talking about Bitcoin, I'm talking about blockchain was a concept of how do you get money and payments to people faster, right? And how do you make that money clear and have um, some sort of verification on it? And so going back to ACH, it takes longer. It actually takes a minimum of five days to clear the transaction. Customers don't care about that. Customers care about, I have my phone on me. I want everything right now. Why can't you get the money to me right now? And they'll even make points, well, like Venmo, if I Venmo, it goes right into my other Venmo account. It's like, yeah, but Venmo still has a payout of a couple days until it can get to you. And so here's the secret of how it works with every single company out there, like Hemlane, who says, we are going to get you to payment not in five business days. We will push it up to three business days or two business days. We are doing a huge algorithm on the back end to say, how likely is this payment to clear? And what we can do is know how much money from the tenant is processing, how much was in their bank account from that sink, like do we have the funds or will it fail due to insufficient funds? In other words, they don't have enough funds. And if there's a high level of confidence over 99% that this payment will clear, we will push it out to you sooner. So we will push it out even before the bank has told us that it has cleared. And if you talk to the banks in ACH, they will say, no, the funds will not clear until five business days. But of course, if we were to tell our customer that, think of what a customer would say, what, why, why does it take so long? And so that's something that all of these tech companies have been doing to get those funds to you faster. Of course, there's fraud is huge. Um, we shut down a lot of fraudulent accounts. And so what we end up doing is verifying customers and slowing down that first payment for verification. And we do a huge security process that you have no idea it's all going on in the back end to make sure that we have a confidence. And then once we do your second, third, fourth, fifth payment, we're still doing some fraud detection in the background, but it's not as slow. Um, so that's a little bit about ACH. Now, a lot of platforms like Hemlane will also do credit and debit card transactions. I am not a fan of either one. The reason is, is they're so easy to dispute. If you've ever called your credit card company, and if you haven't, you know, you can do it now and see how easy it is. And my credit card got um, stolen. Oh, no, your credit card got stolen. You have these last five transactions. Are any of them, you know, um, yours? No, those must have been from someone stealing it. I am so sorry, ma'am, your money is back into your bank account. And just like that, they get disputed. When that happens, Hemling represents the landlords, so the real estate investor, to defend them and say, no, here's the legally binding contract, here's everything else. However, we have someone at Visa, MasterCard, or whatever um, credit card company it is, who knows nothing about tenant landlord law, making the decision of whether or not this dispute is accurate. And we'll have them come back and say, nope, it's disputed and we're, we've retracted the funds and there's nothing you can do. And to us, it's like, wait, do they know anything about tenant landlord law? We've been following this case. We have, you know, everything. And so from that perspective, I highly recommend not doing credit or debit card payments for that reason. So only doing ACH. Now, final point here. And then Dion, I want you to ask me tons of questions. So the last thing you must all be wondering about ACH is then where does this money go when you're doing this payment processing? And so we use Stripe as our payment processor. And what happens is we don't have a trust account. So we are not a property management brokerage. We do not hold any funds. They're not in our bank account or anything like that. They sit with a payment processor who is verified to work with the ACH system. Um, Stripe, who is ours, is one of the largest. I highly recommend only using the largest payment processors. There have been ones that have gone out of business. Your money gets lost. Um, so working with the best of the best who have the most funds and also the strongest processes in place um, is, is definitely something you should be asking your property management software company, whichever one you choose to go with. Uh, but what happens is Stripe will then take the money through this ACH system out of the tenant's bank account, 
put it into this automatic clearing house, the ACH system, and then deposit it into the owner's bank account. They also are not making float or interest on those payments. It is actually sitting in that automatic clearing house to say, our goal is not to make money off of customers. Our goal is to transfer money the safest way as possible to make sure it gets from one party to the other. And these payment processors have a ton of processes, everything from um, PC level one compliance. So on the SOC side, making sure everything's encrypted, no routing numbers or account numbers can get out to the public. They do all of that for us. And so we just have an API with them to say, this is our payment processing partner. They have authorization to go through this process. But then, you know, routing numbers, bank account numbers, um, personally identifiable information like your social security number, that's never held with us. We don't do any of that. And these payment processors have it for all of the um, transactions they do through the system. What I really like is, is just the transparency. Here's how it all works behind the scenes. Yes, with a credit card, you can cancel payments up to six months after making them, probably even longer with some of the cards. Um, an example is I have a cruise coming up next month. And the, the people who put the cruise together also booked the flights. And if there's a connecting flight that doesn't go through, technically, you can just lose all of the money for that cruise. Or wow. you can call your credit card company and say, I want to cancel yeah. that because I didn't actually receive the goods. Um, so you have an added la layer of protection there. I also use Stripe for my courses, and they take a percentage. So not only are you not making interest on the money that takes you three to five days to get to your clients, you're paying the fee to use Stripe. Yeah. Yes. So I, I understand that. Here's kind of how it's working with me. I acquired a couple of rentals last year. So those are the properties that I have on the Hamlane platform. I didn't jump through and go to 16 tenants, right, from all different levels of life and ages. Like I've, I've got a nice lady in her 70s who writes six months worth of checks, has a flip phone, doesn't have the internet in her house. I'm not going to make her learn how to use the internet and a portal. But when there's a tenant turnover there, that would be a unit that then gets added to Hemlane. The main reason I'm on the platform kind of isn't the rent collection. That's a nice aspect. I have done things like used Venmo, Apple Pay, Cash App, Google Pay, all of those different formats and taken the risks associated with it. So I would prefer that they were all going through Hemlane. You know, less risk makes it easier to run your business. But as I have tenant turnover, I'll have more and more properties on the platform. What I really like is the three-tiered system, right? So while I'm here in Washington where my rentals are, I can use the more cost-effective version where it just, I can collect rents, I can list properties. Um, and then if I travel, because I'm going to Thailand for three months here in a couple of months, um, if I need to do a showing, I can do the uh, leasing agent option and step up the tier for the month that I'm going to need it and then step back down. So it's like that flexibility to self-manage my rentals with software uh, is why I'm here. So I was really kind of glad when the person asked, well, what happens to the money? Because I hadn't really thought about it. Most of the platforms will give you an option of you can have three to five business days to receive the money with no fee, or you can pay a fee and get the money quicker. Um, if you're running a business where you need to pay a fee to get your money quicker, I think you need to have better margins, higher reserves, kind of like the situation with any landlord. I don't think you should ever be in the situation where you're waiting to pay the mortgage until the rent comes in. Right? You should yeah. have several months worth of that mortgage in an account where the mortgage can be paid and the rent can come in without you ever having to worry about which order that happened in, or you can quickly find yourself in a lot of trouble. Well, thank you for clearing that up, um, Dana. I, I appreciate it. Um, so the to, to wrap up, the tenants can pay through the portal. There isn't a fee for the landlord or the owner of the property to get the funds in less than five days. It's somewhere between three and five days, right? Yeah. So there's no fee to the owner. There's no fee to the tenant. So we incur that fee for the ACH. So some, some platforms, and actually most of them I see these days, will start charging the landlord or the tenant a fee to pay online. Um, for us, no, we incur that fee. And so we act on behalf of all of our owners, more owners on the platform, better pricing from Stripe, but we incur that fee ourselves. And then um, the only time someone does have to pay is if it's a credit card fee. And then again, that goes to Stripe and, and Visa and MasterCard and stuff like that. But if it's ACH, it's not. 
And um, the final point I'll leave you with on the ECH side is you're right, it's five business days, it goes down. So as you spend more time on Hemlane, you'll see those funds get to you faster, sometimes within one business day. Um, so it's building up your reputation on Hemlane as a verified, non-fraudulent actor on the internet. Awesome. So if you want to try Hemlane as a property management software, you can actually go to hemlane.com. You can use the code word Dion Talk to get 20% off your first year. And again, thanks, Dana, for clearing this up for us. I, I, I like having access to somebody with your information, as we're going to find out in the next video when we talk about something that a property owner with only 18 units probably wouldn't have access to know. But with your last count was 21,000 uh, units on the platform and 3,000 owners probably changes and grows between the times that we talk. But I think you have a bigger scope of what's going on in the market. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Until my next video. Thanks for coming to my Dion talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.